So I'm uh, continuing to work on uh, getting the javelin lower. I've got the right height at seven inches at the rocker panel, and in my last video I showed where I was measuring that. And at that right height, on the passenger side, I'm getting um, zero camber. And on the driver's side, I'm actually getting um, about a degree and a half of negative camber. Uh, and I want maybe three, as much as three and a half degrees negative camber on both sides. Um, and so I've been trying to figure out how to do that. And originally my plan was to take the upper control arms, which are um, adjustable, but which I had, I had them as short as they could be. Basically, the shorter the upper control arm is, the more it will bring the, the top of the tire towards the center line of the car, and that will give you more negative camber. Well, um, I had no more adjustment, but my idea was to cut a little bit off of the arms um, so that I could get even closer uh, on the upper end, tilt the top of the tire. And uh, I started looking at that a little bit more, and I realized that wasn't going to work because the upper control arm is already so tight around the spring, you can't you physically can't get it any closer to the body, it'll start interfering with the coilover. So then I started looking at the lower control arm, the lower control arm is not adjustable as it comes from our control freak. Um, but I thought about, what if I cut these off and uh, put uh, rod ends down here and basically use that to lengthen the, the lower control arm, and if I lengthen the lower control arm, it'll have the same effect. It'll It'll um, kick the bottom of the tire out, it'll kick the top of the tire in, and that'll give me some negative camber. Um, and at the same time, I actually, depending on how much adjustment I give myself here, I can increase the, the track of the front track of the car, and I can um, even push the upper control arm out some to give me more clearance around the coilover uh, and still get the negative camber I want by by lengthening the lower control arm. So that's what I'm going to try to do. Here's the lower control arm out of the car. Uh, this bracket is for the coilover. This is the bracket I added for my new sway bar mount. Um, and then this is how I'm going to make this whole thing adjustable. Um, I'm going to cut off these barrels here and I am going to weld in one of these threaded bungs. I'm actually just going to tack them and basically prove out this whole thing and make sure it, it gets me what I want. And then I'm going to uh, have some TIG weld them because Al said I should get them TIG welded. So these will get cut off. This will get welded here. Now I've got a rod end with whatever that is, an inch and a half of adjustment. This by itself, basically cutting this here, welding this in here, and adding the rod in the jam nut, you'll see there it's about three quarters of an inch longer already. And then I can thread this out, probably another inch, um, and play around with the settings and, and see if I can get the negative camper I want. So I'm going to go take this over to the chop saw and cut off these barrels and um, see how these bungs fit. Okay, so a couple of minutes later, uh, quick trip to the chop saw and the ends, the barrels have been cut off, and now these threaded lungs just slide in and they'll get TIG welded around uh, the circumference. Um, I'm going to just tack them in place with my MIG welder, and here's how the rod ends go, they go eventually. The rod ends are going to go in like this, and totally guessing here, but I'm probably going to start it out with maybe a half inch of thread showing, and I'm going to lengthen the uppers as well, and then kind of see where I'm at and take it from there. I'm going to have to make spacers to uh, make up the space where you know the barrels were longer. Um, but that's it, that's the idea. Now I have an adjustable lower um, control freak IFS uh, lower control arm. And uh, I'm going to do one side first and just make sure everything works out well. And then, uh, then I'll do the other side. All right now I'm just going to put a couple of tacks, which are hopefully going to be enough to uh, hold it so I can test fit it and, and uh, see where I'm at. All right, here we go.
right? So hopefully that's going to hold it. Okay, so the uh, motor control arms are done. Uh, I had them in and out of the car several times. I had the front of the suspension. I had to take the suspension, you know, apart, put it back together. Um, I started on the passenger side and uh, had to have the control arm in and out of the car three times. And that means, you know, I had cut off the barrels. I had tack welded in the bungs, put in the rod ends, reassembled the passenger side, had to lower the car. Um, you know, get to settle, roll it back and forth, and check what camber I was at. And, um, and I had to take it out, grind out the tack welds, and actually trim a little bit off of the arm, reassemble it, put it back in, see where I was at. Still wasn't happy. I had to take it out for a third trim. Um, and at that point, uh, I was pretty happy with it. So then I had to do the same thing on the driver's side, um, except this time I you know, the first cut, I cut it to where I cut this one to um, and put it all back together. It's all where it was. And it wasn't quite right, so I had to pull this one out a second time and trim about a tenth off. Um, I put it all back together. You know, again, that's tack welding every time and then cutting the tack welds and trimming it on my bandsaw when it went up and needed another trim. Anyway, I finally got it to the point where I liked it and uh, had to take the whole thing apart again. And, uh, Took it over to, to Joe, the chassis builder nearby, and had him TIG weld the bungs in like Alec Control Freak told me to do. Um, and then last night I just rattle canned them with some black spray paint again so they, they all got chewed up from all the in and out and working with them on the other. But so, so here it is. I've got uh, three of the rod ends in and this last one here on the table. Um, I'm going to put Never Seize on the threads, or I have put never, never seize on the threads uh, to make sure that they're, you know, they don't get uh, stuck. Uh, also, after the TIG welding, Joe had me run a, um, a tap through these just to chase the threads. Um, so if you were going to do something like this, um, you definitely want to chase them. Can do it. Uh, I left this rod in now because I wanted to show kind of the other part. So here's the barrel that used to be on the end of this, right? We cut that off. Now we've got this rod end, which is significantly narrower. Uh, I didn't measure this, but this is, this is only three quarters of an inch wide. Um, so we need to make up the space, and what I'm making up the space with is a, is a stack of washers. The, the important part, though, is you need to get these style washers for the rod ends. Um, I think they're called hats or top hat, I don't know. But um, you can see they've got an angle on them, and they allow the, the rod end ball to, to work without winding. So I have to use one of those on each side and then I just had to stack a bunch of washers to make up the space. Um, now I am planning to make actual spacers on my lathe. I'll show that at some point in the future but for now uh, I just want to get this thing back together. Um, so this is going to work like this. Right, so all those stacked washers are going to make up for the, um, the width that this, this had. So it's going to go like that. It's going to go into the mount of my car. Um, so that's it for, for here on the bench. Um, once I have it all back assembled and down on the ground, uh, I'll shoot a quick video of where I got the, the camera to. One thing uh, I wanted to mention is that these lower control arms are adjustable now, that's awesome, but they're not really adjustable on the car, uh, which is a definite disadvantage. You know, ideally what you would do is you go out on the track, you run the car, you come in, check the tire temperatures, and if you wanted to make a camber adjustment, you just loosen a jam nut or two, and you'd want to lengthen or shorten the length. Um, well, I can't do that. You know, this is going to be captured at the, at the chassis mount, and can't spin the lower control arm and I can't spin this in the mount. So um, this would have to have the bolts pulled out and the lower control arm lowered uh, to adjust this. And I actually tried this on the car uh, and it's, it's a pain in the butt. Um, I first tried to do it with the uh, rotor and the brake caliper still attached and there's just so much weight hanging there that um, it's really hard to do. If you take off 
the rotor and the caliper. You actually can do it. There's less weight then, and you're able to let the uh, you know take out the bolts and let the lower control and the swing low, and then you can do it. But it, it's it's not really what you want. Um, so if you wanted a truly you know in car adjustable lower control arm, uh, I'm not sure what the best solution is. Um, I asked Joe, and his suggestion was to cut a slot in the in the chassis mount and basically use a round big round heavy washer and a bolt, basically like an eccentric. And that way, um, at the mount, you could basically let the whole arm come in and out a bit. Um, so I don't know, maybe that's a future upgrade, or maybe somebody's got some ideas for a better way to do it. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to mention that. All right, so after weeks of beating on this thing, um, Finally done with the adjustable lower uh, control arm project. Uh, I got it to where I think my range is going to be from about negative three degrees of camber to uh, negative six. Um, and I, you know, I had the car apart and back together so many different times, just trying to keep things symmetrical. Uh, but of course, when I did my final reassembly and um, readjusted the right heights a little bit. Um, did a quick set on my toe and checked it. Uh, it's not exactly symmetrical right now, but where, I've, where the car is sitting right at the moment is I've got negative three and a half degrees camber on the passenger side. On the driver's side, I only have uh, minus two and three quarter, um, but it's adjustable now, so I know that I can get them to match. I'm not gonna do it right this second because I'm just kind of tired of, of doing, you know, all these adjustments over and over and having to take the front end apart and put it back together. I'm going to wait until uh, I do a final scale, final scale alignment, nut and bolt on the car, and, and I'm going to wait for me to have some help. Um, there's some weight not in the car right now. There's no fuel in the car, so, you know, that'll add 100 pounds. And I'm not in the car uh, since I'm working alone. Uh, that's, you know, on all my gear or whatever, probably 185 pounds. So uh, there's 300 pounds that's going to be in the car that's not in, that, in, in it right now. Um, and I want to see if that makes a difference. So rather than spend a bunch of time and, and readjust it now and then get in the car and find out, you know, I need to adjust it again, I'm going to try to do this just one more time when I have a, an extra set of hands to help me. Um, but that's it. Um, adjustable lower control arms for the uh, Control Freak AMC IFS. And we'll have to wait till I get this thing out on the track to see uh, what kind of improvement it made. I, I sure hope it does make an improvement. Um, so you just have to stay tuned.